All right, we are moving on again. This is our, oh man, our seventh video. So what we're going to do is Gauss's law inside of a giant slab that is uniformly charged. In, in this case, again, rho is going to be my total Q over my total volume. So for my total volume is infinite. So we're not actually going to calculate it this way. We're just going to be given a rho. Again, it's going to be all about what our Q enclosed is. So let's, let's get after it. Now, planar symmetry. One of the things that we're going to have to know is that this thing, if this is 0 here, we'll make that D over 2. We'll make this D over 2. So if we are going to draw our Gaussian surface, Right, that's going to be our little cube here that we put on top of this thing. All right, we have an area A here. Our Q enclosed is that area right here enclosed um, inside of the slab. Doesn't have anything to do with anything that's above it. So as long as we're on the outside. Q enclosed is going to be rho times my volume enclosed, which is going to be rho times the area of the top A times the, the width of the part that's inside of the slab, D over 2. But if we're going to draw something that's inside of here, okay, you can do the dimensions yourself. If it has a thickness of R, then the volume enclosed this time, the Q enclosed this time, is rho times the volume enclosed, which is going to be rho again times A, but this time it's going to be this radius R. And and not any anything having to do with the dimensions of this. So on the inside where R is greater than D over 2, when we're outside of this volume. Okay, we're going to have um, e dot dA is equal to my enclosed charge over epsilon naught, rho times A times D over 2 over epsilon naught. If that's the case, it's eA is equal to rho A times D over 2 over epsilon naught. And we have something similar to what we had before with this, which is E is equal to rho times D over 2 epsilon naught. Now it may be a little different because the setup's not quite the same as it was before, but what's notable about this is that it is again, outside of this, a constant electric field. When we get inside to the place where R is less than D over 2, we're going to see something similar to what we've been seeing. Um, e dot dA is equal to my new enclosed charge, rho times A times that R over epsilon naught. So E times A, because it's constant, is rho A R over epsilon naught. The A's go away. And my electric field, just so we have more room, is rho times R over epsilon naught. So if we were to look at the graph of this, E as a function of R, we'd have this place where we're at D over 2 and we'd build line linearly until we got there and then it'd just stay constant because the electric field is constant outside of one of these things. So really all we're changing with this again is what our Q enclosed is. If we can figure out Q enclosed, Gauss's law is going to be super, super easy. 